Hey, photographers, this is Charles Lewis from Charles Lewis Photography in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Hello, everybody. Todd Lewis, also Grand Rapids, Michigan, also Charles Lewis Photography. And uh, we're uh, very thrilled to be coming to you with a, an all-new Lewis-sized kick-in-the-pants photography money-making video. And also thrilled to be coming to you on a nice, uh, sunny, warm, 52-degree day here in Grand Rapids, which is very unseasonable for this time of year. Uh, but in this short video, uh, about 10-15 uh, minutes or so, we're going to give you some very quick tips on uh, marketing, motivation, reaching your goals, uh, various different secrets for you to utilize in your photography business uh, over the course of the next week, next year, month, decade, century, whatever, uh, to get, make sure that you're a success in your photography business. Now, let's jump into the first section here, where I always like to do a, uh, a, mar a motivating uh, quote of the week. Now, this one doesn't come from a specific person. It's actually a Norwegian proverb, but it's one that I particularly like, uh, which is, quote, experience is the best teacher, but the tuition is high. Now, <laughs> the reason I like that is, is because although experience is often the best way to learn, uh, there is indeed a shortcut. So yes, experience is the best way to learn because you're actually out there, you're doing the stuff, it's kind of trial and error, you're finding out what works for you and what doesn't, and you really do discover and learn a lot. But I, I, that's not my favorite way to learn. I would much rather learn a different way, right, Dad? Yeah, if you learn from those who have the experience themselves, so you don't have to go through all the trial and the error and the pain and the suffering and take a long, long time to figure it out. You just learn from those who are where you want to be that have already discovered the secrets themselves. Yeah, absolutely, because every single thing that we do in our photography business is teaching us something. You know, we're all about letting others prove things first, then we'll use them in our own business. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. You shouldn't reinvent the wheel. So remember, right. although experience is the best teacher and the tuition is high, that experience does not necessarily have to be your own. You can learn right. from other people's experience. Let them do the trial and error. But the key is to make sure you're learning from the right people that have the proven techniques, the proven things that have worked, and that have worked in the photographic industry when we're talking photography, which we obviously are here in these, uh, these uh, short videos. All right. Yeah. Next up is our fast action marketing tip of the week. Oh, this is a big one, folks, so really listen in on this one. This one is all about creating a testimonial letter, which you can use online and offline, so both you know on the web or in direct mail, to bring in new clients. So what a testimonial letter is, for anyone who doesn't know what I'm talking about here, it's, uh, it's first of all, it's one of the best single ways to market your photographic business, and it's a letter that's coming from one of your thrilled clients saying wonderful things about you, your photography, and the experience that he or she has had working with you. Yeah, and what others say about you and your photography is at least 10 times, I usually say it's 100 times, more effective than anything you or I can say about ourselves. Yeah, that's absolutely true because, uh, you know, again, we can say anything we want about our photography business, and especially nowadays with, you know, um, marketing online being so easy, so inexpensive. You know, anybody can say anything they want about themselves. It doesn't have a lot of credibility, but when you, when someone else is saying something about you, a thrilled client is saying something about you, um, it, it's so much more effective. So let's take just a very quick look at one of our testimonial letters here um, so you can kind of see what we're talking about. Now, what's coming up on your screen there, that's the first page of this letter. And what I want you to see is that this entire letter remember, is coming from the thrilled client. Now, you've written this for that client, so they don't take the time to write it. You've written it for them so that it can say the things that you really want it to say, but then you get it okayed through them so that you're sure yep. that this is 100% honest, 100% true, and they'll tweak it with you, you know, after you've written that first draft. But look at that headline. I wanted you to know about this Charles Lewis photographer guy, so I'm taking time to write to you now. It's a great letter, It's or, or headline for that letter. It's what I like to call kind of a curiosity letter. Oh, you're going to tell me about this Charles Lewis guy. And if you've been doing other marketing in your area, especially exhibits and so forth, a lot of people are already going to kind of know who you are, potentially. So when they see this, it's going to really draw them out that way. And then underneath that, the subhead underneath, the journal of a loving mother 
that's oh I, I just love that because again it says it's from a mother it's emotional which we know that selling photography is all about uh, getting connected with people emotionally um, I'm going to show you the next page here uh, that just came up on the screen there. Notice there's a double readership path. There are subheadlines throughout the marketing piece. It, very, very powerful throughout the letter. Uh, one of them that I really, really like here is, um, but notice that subhead near the top. But these photographs spoke to me. It was almost as if the camera had captured the exact moment when these families were the happiest. Now, this is this person, this client who's written this letter talking to another cl potential client about photographs that she saw of ours before she ever chose us to be her photographer. And it's talking on an emotional level again. So I, hopefully that's really clear. And then I'm bringing up here, this last one is kind of, uh, we skip a couple pages in there. This is the last page. I wanted you to notice down at the bottom, there's a PS down there. And that PS is really important because in letters, people read the PS uh, statistically, uh, you know, is one of the most read parts of a letter. Dad, anything else that you want to say about crafting a powerful testimonial letter before we move on here? Yeah, you want to think in terms of how your target market, which for us is a female, 25 to 65 years old, warm, fuzzy, emotional person, how that person is going to be thinking and feeling and, and when she's even remotely thinking about having a photograph created. And then you write a testimonial letter like this. And you know, you've got to pick someone who is your absolute, I mean, they just love you. You know, you're thinking of somebody right now mm -hmm. that absolutely loves you, would, would say anything about you that is great and wonderful. They just loved everything you did. They're kind, nice, excited people. You know the person I'm thinking of or the family I'm thinking of. So you write that letter from their perspective, and then you give them a call, and you just get it approved. And you may have to change a couple of words, but always remember to end the letter with her full name, first and last name because that is the credibility where literally you could Google her, find her, and call her and ask her if she really said those things. I mean, nobody will do that, but they could if they wanted to, and that's what makes a testimonial and in this case, a testimonial letter so effective. Now remember, you can use this both online and offline. This was is a great thing to have as part of right. your website. Also, you know, this can be part yeah. of your website. Um, it can be sent out as a PDF to people who request more information from you. It can be attached when people uh, email you asking about your prices and what you charge and so forth. You can send this to them then as well. Uh, very powerful. And it can be also sent in conjunction with many different offers. So you can also have a special offer that's uh, bundled in with that. Uh, we could spend hours talking about this because it's one of our favorite marketing pieces uh, that we've used in, in, uh, and that other photographers are using in their photography businesses to great success. But we got to move on because this is a short kick in the pants video. So let's move on to our motivational exercise of the week. Staying motivated is, is, is something that takes time and energy. So uh, we, you got to keep exercising. That's why I got that dude on the treadmill there. You got to kind of <laughs> keep that exercise going, you know, make sure that you're doing the things to keep yourself motivated. And uh, this week, I want you to think about this. Fill your mind daily, hourly with positive ideas, concepts, strategies, and vocabulary. Don't listen to the negative voices. Now, like I said, staying motivated is not something you should have to turn on and off, all right? We need to develop the habits that support a constant state of positive thinking and, per and personal motivation. Yeah, this starts the minute you get up in the morning and you're making a conscious effort to tune out the negative stuff and amplify the positive stuff. I call this my PTS time. I'm planning, I'm thinking, and I'm studying. In the studying part, I'm putting positive stuff into my mind. And no television, no radio, none of that stuff. You gotta be very, very conscious of what is going into your mind if you wanna stay excited, motivated, driven. It's very important. And all of this begins the moment you get up in the morning. Make sure that the first things you see and hear are motivating, that they're positive, that they're right. inspiring. And then also this doesn't end until you go to sleep at night. 
uh, guess what? It even continues in your subconscious while you're sleeping when you do it this. Does. So it's really important because there's a, there's so much negativity out there in the world. Let's make sure we're filling our minds only with the positive stuff. That way, when something comes along in your day that challenges you, that um, could be normally perceived as a negative or a stumbling block, you will have built up this positive energy in you through the positive messages that you've sent yourself that it won't hit you nearly as hard and you'll know that you can get through this, that you can make this work. Now, also I want to talk a moment about vocabulary. And when I say vocabulary, I mean make sure that you're filling your mind with positive vocabulary, not only from the people you surround yourself with, but with the words that you use for yourself. So don't say, oh, I can't do that, or, oh, today is just a terrible day, or, oh, nothing seems to ever work, or, you know, that start, and believe me, I know this because I've done this myself, all right? I'm not, you know, I'm telling you these things honestly because I've gone through these things myself. We all have our negative times. I know what this is like, and you start using those negative vocabulary in your own mind and in your own words, that has an impact on how the rest of the day goes. But if instead you say, you know what, I can do this. Hey, this is just a, this is a momentary stumbling block. This is a challenge. I like challenges. I can get through this challenge. And I know on the other side of that challenge is going to be a great reward. Yeah. I can't remember who I first heard this from, or I'd give him or her credit. But as the first hour of your day goes, so goes your day. So take control of how that first hour goes. Take control of what goes into your mind and you will achieve the dreams that you have. Yeah, this seems like esoteric stuff, you know, I, yeah. stuff. I'm, I'm clean, I'm using nice language here, you know. But there's something really positive, there's something that works in that, okay? We can't discount the power of our mind and neuro-linguistic programming and how our mind and our body work together to create an, an outcome that we want. All right, next right. up is a comment from a, a, a photographer, Dan Waters in the UK, who has this to say. Dad, I know you received this, I believe, this week, and uh, uh, here's what Dan had to say. Many thanks and have a great year. I spread your gospel wherever I go. Little old ladies on the street seem confused, but hey, everyone should hear this stuff. <laughs> and he says, uh, all the best. And again, that's Dan Waters. Dad, uh, this is obviously part of a slightly longer email that you got. Uh, what was this yep. reference to? Uh, Dan's a member of my inner circle, and he had a question, and I was answering his question, and we were going back and forth, and, and this was on the bottom of, of one of his <laughs> emails. And I just, I literally laughed out loud when I read it. That's great. I, I could just that picture him walking kind. down the street preaching the Lewis eyes gospel and having little old yeah. ladies looking at him very strange. That's great. Thank you so much for that comment, Dan. Yeah, we appreciate thank you, it Dan. Next up is our recommended study from the online vault. And our online vault, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, is uh, something that our members have access to. It's an online vault <laughs> of, uh, <laughs> of, of hundreds of hours, literally, of uh, video, yeah. audio uh, content, on um, every aspect of running a successful photography business. And uh, each week I want to highlight a little something from that um, online vault. And this week I'd like to talk about how to master the art of selling your portrait photography. It's a two-part series where we delve into the 12 biggest underground secrets for becoming more successful with selling your photography without pressure or trickery of any kind. That's the important part right there. Watch your average sales skyrocket so your cash flow and profits dramatically improve. Dad, we're, uh, I know you are a huge proponent, as I am, of selling without trickery and without That's pressure. Right. If you can't sell something honestly and without feeling like you're pressuring people, you shouldn't be in that business. Why don't you right. talk just you know, for 30 seconds or so, Dad, about the importance of your ability to sell your portrait photography and about this two-part series very quickly. Yeah. This is one of the best things I think I've ever done, that we've ever done, and I'm very excited about it. You know, selling is not pressure, it's finding out what people want and helping them to get it. So our entire photography business is built around the best ways to find out exactly what somebody wants so that we can be darn sure that we can use our abilities with our camera and our photographic talents and skills to create exactly what it is that she wants. So it's you a bet. very important aspe aspect of the way you look at Selling. Selling is not a bad thing. It's not a trickery thing. It's simply find out what she wants by asking her the right questions and, and doing it in a very, very uh, personable, friendly way, and then figure out how you can help her to get that. 
All right, so in this two-part series, and it's a two-parter, it's a, it's two full-length parts. I believe each part is about an hour and a half, so we delve into every area you can imagine about how to do this perfectly. So uh, for uh, members, if you're a member, uh, just click on the Members Access link below this video, and it'll take you right to that spot on the online vault for you. If you're not a member and you'd like some more information about possibly becoming a member, uh, feel free to click on the link below that says More Information About Becoming a Member. All right, it's time for uh, one of my favorite and most important parts of each one of these videos, the goals and planning section. This is the time when you take a look at your goals, your progress, and your planning of the upcoming week. During this section, I want you to pause the video after we uh, go over the three points here. You're going to read your goals aloud, which I hope you have written goals, written goals. You're going to read them aloud. Don't just go find a private place somewhere in the house, you know, go in the bathroom, close the door, you know. If you feel right. kind of weird or self-conscious about it, read your goals aloud. Review your progress from last week and make some notes on how you did and what challenges you might have come across. And then also take some moment to kind of plan out your next week. Get an overview of what you want to get accomplished in your next week. So pause the video here. We're going to give you just a couple of minutes. Uh, take, take as long as you want. Take yeah. an hour. Take two. We'll, we'll yeah. wait. We'll wait. Yeah, because this is important. This is really important to your future. Absolutely. All right. Pause that video now. All right, we're back. You read your goals aloud. Fantastic. You did all those steps. Now we're ready for our final thoughts for the week. Uh, each week we want to leave you with a little something to take with you as you go through the rest of the week, kind of, quote, on your own. And, and I want to remind you, I did quotes there with on your own because you're not on your own. I want you to remember right. that uh, you are. we're there with you every step of the way oh, yeah. as well. So, you know, if you have any questions or comments or anything, please stay in touch with us. But remember, the world is basically made up of two types of people. People who believe the things just happen to them and there's not much they can do about it. And people who believe they are a major determining force in where their lives go and take action on moving themselves in the right direction. So it's up to you to decide which of these two basic types of people you want to be. Right. So here, here's a hint, a hint, by the way, uh, by making this decision, you're already ensuring that you are one of the take action people. The other type wouldn't even want to make a decision. So that's, right. that's our final thoughts for the week. Have a great rest of the week. We'll come to you again next week with an all new Lewis sized kick in the pants video. Take care. <laughs> Bye now. <laughs>